Hospital, Cancer Center. We're supposed to meet with a specialist today. Twenty over eighty-two blood pressure is good. That is good. Let me put this in the system and I'm gonna take it over. Sure. Here we go. Have the manual. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay. was what the next step is for treating you based on what was found on your CT scan. Mm -hmm. well, so tell me uh, what, what you're up to date with on so far. What has she told you? Well, she, the, my, the reason that I thought that I was here was because I guess I had the condition with my liver. Okay. That's called the fatty liver or whatever. Okay. And with that, she was wondering if she needed to lessen the dosage of the atopicide or whatever during my chemo so that it doesn't affect my liver or whatever. Now, right. the, the other, I went and saw a liver specialist. He right. told me that the only way to reverse what's going on with my liver is to lose weight. Right. So I'll lose like 20 pounds. So, which today I got on the scale and I freaking gained two pounds. Oh, okay. You know, so I'm, I'm well. supposed to lose 20 and I gained um, two. So, you have a little bit of stress going on in your life right now. You know, we can cut you a little bit of a slack yeah, with us. That's fair enough. I mean, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. The chemo will help you to lose weight, though. Well, you know, my goal, and I think Dr. Nimagato's goal, is for it not to, to help you lose weight inadvertently. You know, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we don't get you sick with that. Mm -hmm. And I think, honestly, that's probably one of the, the biggest factors in terms of people doing well with your chemotherapy and getting through their chemo regimens. Um, in the, the past, you know, 10, 15 years, and, and certainly in the past 10 or so years that I've been doing this, mm -hmm. we've gotten much better at treating the side effects of chemo. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the type of chemo that she talked to you about and that I'll talk to you about is actually, um, it's been around for a long time. You know, we, we know that it works well, and because most men with testicular cancer can actually get cured long-term with this kind of chemotherapy, we haven't really had to change it up that much. Mm -hmm. But what's really changed is the way that we can help you get through it without a lot of nausea or vomiting or fatigue. So, you know, actually, hopefully this won't help you lose weight. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So there's no bleomycin in my type of chemo, right? It's right. Because of the lungs is when the smoke. Correct, right. Um, and that is, is technically, that was the earliest regimen combined, a combination, and, and you probably know all of these drugs well already, of, of a platinum agent and cisplatin. Cis um, atopicide and bleomycin, but what we find is that if there's any pre-existing lung damage or the, the risk of pre-existing lung damage, and smoking can do that, occupational exposures can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a few guys that have worked around asbestos and, and grown up around that, so, so that kind of raises my, right. my concerns. Then we'll get just as effective treatment if we remove the bleomycin and instead of giving you three rounds of chemotherapy, we give you the four with the cisplatin and atopicide. Right. And, um, with the testicular cancer that, that I had, uh, the reason that I'm doing the chemotherapy was because see, I'm glad I'm talking to your specialist because in, in this kind of cancer, right? Right, correct. Because what I've what I've been told is that only seven thousand people get this a year. The doctor even got it might have seen one or two. Gotcha. We see quite a few coming through here. Yeah. 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 And with the, so I, I opted out of doing the radiation because I didn't want to get cancer again. And that pretty good possibility that could happen. You know, we're we're seeing more and more that that in the the late term with cancer patients that there's an increased risk of problems from radiation, um, not just different types of, of cancers popping up, different types of leukemias and, and sarcomas. Um, also heart disease, actually, the 
survivorship in, in patients or in the long term is becoming uh, kind of a, of a big hot topic. You know, we're paying attention that fortunately we've got patients living for decades longer after their cancer diagnosis. And I think especially in the case of, of men with testicular cancer, you know, you're a young guy, you know, you're in your 20s, you hopefully will be cured from this and have many decades to, to live mm -hmm. um, without this. But the, the issues that are raised or what kind of side effects are you gonna live with in the future with this? And there are a few big studies going on in, in Europe, and we're catching up in the United States now, um, looking at how men do in the long term from their testicular cancer. You know, they have any leftover symptoms from chemo or from radiation. And heart disease actually is, is starting to come up. You know, even if we take out factors like smoking or family history of heart disease or family history of high cholesterol, if, if we can kind of statistically eliminate all of those, we see that probably treatments for testicular cancer, um, radiation and chemotherapy, but, but we're thinking possibly radiation a little bit more can contribute to heart disease in the long run. So basically, you know, all of these things are, are things that, that are kind of works in, in progress right now, kind of a, a process of learning about this. And, you know, certainly I think it's most important to treat the cancer that you have right now rather than thinking about what's going to happen when you're 60 or 70 down the line. Right. But looking at, at you know all of the potential risk factors, I think that there's more of a focus these days on switching to chemotherapy instead of radiation. Yeah, I mean, because Dr. Nimogada had originally suggested that I do radiation, and the reason that she did that was because of the stage that my cancer's in and the right. size of the lymph nodes. It, it made me, I guess, fortunate enough to be able right. to go through radiation right, exactly. as opposed to chemo. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I did. And, and I agreed with it. I signed right. a paper and everything. And then I spoke with the people from the Livestrong Foundation mm -hmm. who asked, who told me I need to see a specialist, which is you. Right. And they said that I need to see a specialist and that in the, in, what was it, in Indiana where Lance Armstrong got right. treated, they haven't used radiation in 15 years right. for this kind of cancer. So it, made, it got me scared. It's like, why did she tell me to do radiation in the first place if they're telling me that, that you know, the, the vast majority of people who get the testicular cancer go to the chemotherapy. Yeah. I think it's probably because of the stage that you're at more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And you, you probably have heard all of the, the staging. You know, if we talk about stage one, basically it means that this tumor was confined to the testicle alone. Mm -hmm. Stage two means that you have lymph node or, or lymph nodes in your system, but they're, they're fairly small. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting up into stage three, the lymph nodes are getting larger, the, the cancer is going elsewhere. Um, so you're a stage two right now, and, and based at least on your, your scans that, that were, you know, back a little while ago now, but I would still call you, what, what is a stage B? I did get a, uh, a PET scan, right. and then after the PET scan, it said that it hadn't gone anywhere, right. so that it was still kind of just hanging out. So you're, you're still kind of hanging out with that one area of lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. um, stage two patients are a little bit more... Um, I'm going to say controversial in terms of the best treatment compared to stage one patients, which are men that they get their testicle removed. That was the only place where the cancer is. Mm. And the question is, you know, what do you do with them afterwards? And chemotherapy by and large is, is the way to go with those men um, because again of the, the toxicities associated with radiation. In stage two cancers like yourself, where there is some lymph node positivity, some activity, but not a lot of it, mm -hmm. There's less data out there saying that chemotherapy is the, the absolute best way to go, the only way to go. Mm -hmm. Just because there have been fewer studies on that. There, there have been more studies um, performed on, on men with the so-called clinical stage one testicle confined cancer. Um, but within those groups, I think that, that practice-wise and, and in a sense philosophy-wise, we're really focusing more on chemotherapy as being safer in the long term for men. <laughs>
it's true.